Welcome to Legacy Cast, your source for hearing from top influencers, industry experts, and successful business owners who are telling their unique story about life, values, goals, business strategies, and the various causes they are so passionate about. Future generations will come to be impacted by what is happening today, whether positive or negative, and our mission is to focus on what is going to affect change for the better. Hosted each weekday by James Snow, a former U.S. Army combat medic, now founder and principal advisor of James Advisors Group, a full-service financial planning firm in North Texas. This is Legacy Cast. Welcome, Legacy Cast listeners. This is your host, James Snow, and we're coming to you here uh, from North Texas again. Um, have with me today a really good guy, uh, David Summerfleck, and uh, he's going to be talking to you about um, lots of different things uh, for for your business, both uh, from a marketing standpoint and also you know just a design standpoint, uh, if you will. Uh, he has uh, several different uh, angles that he can kind of come in from that. But, you know, it's something that's very valuable because, you know, we, we as business owners, you know, we want to build something that's going to last, um, you know, here with, with the program Legacy Cast, you know, obviously we want to talk about, you know, how that's going to last for multiple generations. And so, you know, we, we like to have certainly, you know, guests that, that have tips and tricks and techniques that are going to be able to help the listener because, you know, ultimately, you know, that's going to help your business to be able to last to the multiple generations. So, you know, without further ado, I would like to give a, a formal welcome to, to David Summerflick. Welcome to the program, David. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, and you were, just uh, before we came on the program, you know, we were talking about, you know, you're, you're a marketing consultant. Yes. And, and you also do uh, web design. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. I've been doing, I started out basically uh, as an English major in college, studying to be a writer and a journalist. And uh, so that's really the core of my education, my uh, scholastic training. But um, while I was in college, um, I found that I really could not read for pleasure anymore because everything I read, I was so programmed uh, to dissect and analyze everything. So I couldn't read for pleasure anymore. Everything I read, I was just looking at the rhythm, the pentameter, the spelling, the, the approaches, and the dramatic arc, and everything else. And so I started looking at programming to help me uh, unwind. Back then, I didn't know about Sudoku, and crossword puzzles seemed kind of limited. So I started looking at uh, programming, and just started looking at you know building websites in my spare time for small. Uh, business owners while I was a college student uh, way back then, you know. Uh, then once I started to get involved with writing and copywriting and editing and working for different agencies, you know, uh, we got more and more into that as things progressed. And I also saw a lot of reporters, uh, journalists working for a lot of publications who were making, you know, unbelievably low wages and really not having much of a future unless you have a master's degree. So I just started studying more and more about marketing and the different approaches and the different tools that uh, companies and businesses use to get their message across. So that's maybe a longer answer than you anticipated? No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> no, I, you know, I have uh, also... Uh, a certain contingency of my my listeners are also uh, either active or prior military, and, and so you you grew up in a, a navy family. Is that right? Yeah, uh, your dad was navy. Yes. Yeah, uh, my dad uh, he's still with us. He's in his eighties now. Just a, a tough old bird. But uh, my dad was in the navy for maybe thirty to thirty five years. So I was kind of a military yeah. brat. We would move around from location to location. Um, and I spent a lot of, you know, time on bases. I remember I used to joke that I could get in my father's car when I learned how to drive. I could drive right up to the missile silos and they let me in. I couldn't believe it. Um, but <laughs> you know, one of the things that I really picked up from being around so many military people was a sense of immediacy, a sense of, you know, things matter 
you know, uh, you know, I grew up in a military family, so I'm not used to using expletives, but if I drop something on my foot or I feel strongly about something, I'll say it, but it's basically getting shit done. Uh, yep. You know, and the, the immediacy, a sense of immediacy that if this matters to you, you do it. You don't sure. have excuses. You don't, I'll get around to it whenever you formulate plans, you make them as, as solid as you can. You plan for uh, things coming up and you develop that plan with multiple approaches, just like in the military, we have land, mm -hmm. uh, air, sea, um, you have the psyops, you've got, you know, frontal, you've got every kind of different approach. And so over the years, over the decades, I've learned all these different approaches to marketing. Uh, so the real challenge is working with the small to medium sized business owner who really needs that help, getting them to be open enough that you can help them, um, you know, and, and applying that, those methods that, that, uh, basically having an overarching plan and then having different tiers or levels that you plug into that. And I've never seen a business yet that doesn't start achieving real tangible objectives if they'll stick to a plan. The hard part, like I said, is getting them to agree with you and put their pride aside and say, well, what's more important, taking care of your family, providing for your future, or being right? Because you may not be able to have both, you know. <clears throat> yeah, you made a really good point there. And yeah, since you know, I, I work with business owners on, on the finance angle, is you know, I see that all the time that it's the ego gets in the way. And you know, they're, they're so excited about starting their business that they, they skip a lot of those foundational starting points yeah. and, and just kind of jump, jump into the deep end of the pool because they're, they're just so jazzed about getting into business. They've got the next – you know, next best thing since sliced bread, so to speak. Yeah. And, well, and so they want to jump in and you yeah. know, they, they do it with, without, you know, having a life preserver. Yeah. And, and I'll give you a great example. Um, and I'm not, obviously I'm not going to use a gentleman's name. I consulted with a lawyer who uh, basically articulated me, Hey, I want to start my own practice. I want to see my own law firm clients. I want to, defend more people. I want to be in court representing my own clients. And I want to have a regular, you know, roster in the law, they would call it your caseload. And after talking to him a couple of times, uh, basically two consultations, I could see very clearly what was holding him back. And it was basically, he was working for an old established law firm. And his dream was to be independent, you know, self-sufficient, self self-reliant, um, sure. independent of this law firm. But he had no skin in the game. So he wasn't willing to risk anything, nothing. Wow. So, uh, so here he was still working full-time for this large, what we call legacy law firm. They don't use marketing. They don't care about marketing. Their website looks like a PowerPoint presentation, and they're fine with that because most of their clients are going to come through referrals and from you know, people who work at the courthouse or what have you. So he couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting any referrals. But he didn't want to spend any money. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying a lot. I'm saying nothing, period. And was insistent on doing everything himself. And after we talked, I realized he'd been doing this for like five years. And how's that working for you? Nothing. He's getting literally nothing. And um, wow. I couldn't really separate him from that mindset of I'm determined to keep doing everything myself. All I want from you are some tips and tricks or to tell me how to do things myself faster and easier. And I realized also at that point, even if I told you, Technically, you wouldn't understand it because I can't teach you how to be a web designer or a developer and programmer and an SEO expert and a copywriter all overnight. So you wouldn't understand it. And so how, how in the hell would you have time to do it? Because you still have to go to court, you know. Um, so it's, it's an example of really what not to do. You're sacrificing your future, what could be your future, for basically comfort, just not breaking out of that mold. And so for me, that's kind of like, it's like that pebble in your shoe. You know, I just said, I, I wish you all the best. Uh, but after two conversations, 
we're really not a good fit for each other. You've got to be committed to taking some kind of deliberate action. This has to matter to you enough that you're willing to do something. The skin in the game. You know, I, I have to say it's like that old joke where the guy's walking down the street and he walks past an old house like the old um, row houses and there's a dog mm -hmm. sitting on the front porch moaning, groaning. And he goes up to the lady on the porch and says, excuse me, why is your dog moaning and groaning like that? It's so loud. He's always laying on a nail. So the guy said, well, why doesn't he get up? And he said, well, it just doesn't hurt him bad enough. And that's what you see with a lot of people when it comes to their business, their marketing. Um, it just, there's not enough skin in the game. A sense of immediacy has to be there so that you're willing to get up off your behind and do something about it. Because you can talk a good game, but that's not the same thing as having a business. And I can blame the economy. I can blame the president. I can blame the people who came before, on and on and on. But at the end of the day, it's the person in the mirror. You know, so. That's true. Yeah, we, we have to take individual responsibility for the results that we want. So if you want some kind of a legacy for the next generation, what are you doing today? to establish that, to build that now, it's cause and effect. You're going to get out what you're putting in. If you're not putting anything in, that's what you're going to get. And it always just, it used to amaze me. It really doesn't anymore. It's just more sad or disheartening, you know, where so many people will call. I tried to build my own website. I've been spending months or years on it. I'm not getting phone calls. I don't understand what's going on. My budget is $200. You know, that type of mentality and it's a case of you don't know what you don't know, but do you value your desired outcomes enough that you're willing to invest in it as you would if you wanted to go on a trip to Disney World or get a new car or a Rolex or whatever? Yeah, that's a very good point because, you know, people will spend on, on the things that matter to them the most. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know I, I lose track of the number of times that, that I would have somebody come in for, for a consult and, you know, they walk in with, you know, a Starbucks and a pastry. And, you know, I know that that's probably Rough. about 10 bucks worth of an investment. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're doing that every single day, but then they don't have any money to, to be able to plan for their future. Right. And, it's, and you know, it's that same scenario. Yeah. And it's very true. And honestly, you know, that 10 bucks, if, you know, I tell people all the time, I have a coaching client who was asking me about uh, budgeting. And I said, well, if you stop eating out, and that includes your Starbucks or whatever, if you just stop eating out for 30 days, you'll have enough money to launch a Facebook ad campaign, a Google AdWords campaign, or pay for your hosting for a professionally developed website, depending on how, much, how often you eat out. I mean, you know, I tell people all the time, you can advertise on Facebook over the weekend for $10. How many people will you reach? I don't know, but it's something, you know, it, uh, it's like that old saying, you can, you know, sit and curse in darkness or you can light a candle. So I guess it's a, that's probably the biggest influence that being around so many military people have had on me. I don't believe um, in the unwinnable situation. I don't subscribe to the belief that there is nothing you can do. There's always some way that you can kind of, reboot or refocus or redesign and come back stronger. It may take you six months. It may take you a, a, a couple of years, but you can always come back bigger or stronger, better than you were before. If you're committed to an intelligent plan. That's very true. And you know, the, the, the great differentiator uh, between the successful people and not successful people is the difference between scarcity and, abundancy mindsets yeah just you know <clears throat> that the, you know kind of like you know they say you know glasses half empty or glasses half full you know s same kind of philosophy there that just depending on you know which side of that coin that people are coming from and it's getting people onto the right side that that really is is so important so that they yeah. can then start to grow on their own you know give them a little push today and then you know they're able to grow on their own from there yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, as, as a financial advisor, that if you're someone in your 20s and you set aside $100 every two weeks, 
-hmm. And if you do that at a young enough age, by the time you reach the point at which you could retire, or even for that matter, by the time you get to be in your forties, you're going to have so much tucked away, you know, that it could really be substantial. Um, you know, just putting money into a drip or something. Um, it can make such a huge difference if you just do that. I read a very sobering statistic that said the average American family is one paycheck away from being out on the street. Right. And I believe it. And it, it's very disheartening. It's very sad. And it really doesn't have to be that way. Uh, one of the things that my, my father did teach me uh, was to you know always pay yourself first. And like you said, you know, I'm going to be the tax man. So every time you get a paycheck, uh, we're going to tax it. You're going to pay your taxes to the government. Then I'm going to take an additional 10% and we're going to put it into the savings account or we can put it in a shoe. It doesn't matter, but you always pay yourself first. And you have to build a foundation. You know, it all comes down to building what you want. It's not enough to talk about what you want. You know, the world is full of talkers, um, but the very few number of doers. You know, that's a very good point. Uh, now, when, when you're looking at your business uh, from the CEO standpoint, <clears throat> uh, how would you say that you correlate your, your legacy mindset uh, into your business uh, and its strategy? Well, I'm, I'm single. or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not single. I'm married, but my wife and I don't have children. So for me, legacy would be more of basically how can I help as many business owners um, as possible. And that, that's really what gives me joy. Uh, what makes me feel fulfilled is being a part of something larger than myself. So how do I attach myself to a legacy or how do I build a legacy? It's really by trying to be a positive uh, force of the universe without sounding like a comic book. But that, that's really the, the, the actual truth. I love being a part of businesses and being able to turn them around from you're on the brink of bankruptcy or you're about to close the doors permanently. And I can get involved and change that. I can reverse that. Sure. Sure. Then it's a great, great feeling. And now granted, you can't do it every time, every day. You can't do it with every client. Some you can only do it partially. Some you can't do it at all. Some you can do it completely. But when you really can be an effective agent and change, it's very gratifying. It is. It is because, you know, that on so many different levels, that, that changes lives because, you know, you have the, the business owner and then if they have employees, you know, for each employee, that's, that's just that many more families that, that are impacted by whatever change, you know, we as, yeah. you know, the consultant side of it, you know, that we're able to, you know, inject into that business. And, you know, there's many, yeah, many lives, you know, even, even beyond kind of like the ripples in the pond scenario. <clears throat> when you, when you toss the, the pebble into the pond and it creates ripples, you know, that's the same thing that we're doing when we work with businesses because the employees and then their vendors, you know, the vendors are, necessary and the vendors have needs. And so keeping one business open is going to help those vendors because there's those relationships. So it's just a, a multiplying effect. So it's a very good example yeah. for how, how your legacy, you know, even, even not having children, how your legacy is, is carrying forwards just from the business standpoint. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, we can all have an impact on the future by doing what we're good at, but also what we enjoy and combining those two and dedicating ourselves to that, you know, sure. um, you know, there, there's no greater feeling and, um, you know, I mean, very, very true. So kind of what, from what I've been gathering from all the, the things that we've said so far, uh, I guess this is sort of a, you know, rhetorical question, but do you believe uh, that it's important that people create strategies for themselves, both on a personal and business side? Well, it's not that much of a rhetorical question because I think people really miss the forest for the trees. Uh, 
the way I look at it is you need a plan and that the strategies are parts of the, of the, the plan. It's like, you know, the, the Coliseum, you've got this beautiful building it's supported by columns. So I, you know, it, if you took 99% of all the business owners out there, entrepreneurs, and asked them what their plan was, what their long-term marketing plan was, I don't think that the I don't think the answer would be a plan. I think you would have, oh well, I'm going to post things to social media and I'll get clients that way or something. That's a strategy, and it's an incomplete strategy at best. Um, so. I'm a big uh, proponent for having a plan in place and having different ways to achieve that plan. Just like, you know, what we were saying earlier with the military, Uh, you know, the military would not, you know, the the United States as a country would have fallen a long time ago if our military establishment only had one approach and just used one strategy. You know, Mm -hmm. we're just going to have a Navy. We're just going to have an Air Force. You know, we're just going to have a PSYOPs uh, division. Uh, you know, you know, you've got the land and you've got the Green Berets, you've got the Rangers, you've got the SEALs, you've got all these other divisions within that one. So I'm a big uh, proponent of really sitting down and getting to know my clients and just saying, tell me what your goals are, what are your ambitions. Let's talk about the pain points, why you're not achieve- achieving them, because you've got to get real about this. You have to own your failure as much as you can own your success. You can't have one without the other. Um, You can't, you know, I think we live too much in a fast food mentality culture right now, Uh, certainly with younger people who expect immediate gratification, but you see it with uh, people my own age and younger where they just expect everything to be super simplistic or immediate. Um, And it just doesn't work that way. And, and, you know, nobody went into the, any of the, uh, branches of the military and you came out perfectly trained and, and adjusted, you know, within, within a week or two, you know, it, it, it takes years. Uh, you know, so yeah, I think every, every business owner definitely needs to have a marketing plan with different components or strategies in place. If you're going to reach sustained recurring profitability, you know, and if you tell me what well, David, I disagree. Hey, that's fine. Uh, you know, but you're putting undue pressure on yourself and your family. So I hope that kind of answers your question. I probably went off on yeah. a little rant. Yeah, it does. It does perfectly. Thank you. <clears throat> now, as far as uh, for uh, new entrepreneurs uh, and young businesses, what would you say uh, is has been your observation as far as uh, why they're failing or simply giving up? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, like I said, I'm also a business coach uh, where, where I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and startup founders and people who want to start their companies. And really the biggest disconnect I see is, is you know, they're just not very informed. Um, I've talked to people with MBAs who are starting businesses and just have overlooked really, really uh, glaring things that are right behind them, you know, about to catch up, uh, such as debt. Um, So I think that the biggest thing that I see in younger entrepreneurs is really, A, expecting immediate gratification, uh, expecting results right away. If you're on social media, if you look at YouTube a lot and you read books about marketing, you see uh, this is a very common theme regurgitated over and over again by a lot of marketing authors and uh, social media experts and self-help gurus, you know, uh, it's, it's putting in the work, but it's also using the plan to get the experience that you want. Um, one of the biggest things that I really believe in is finding someone who is doing what it is that you say you want to do and aligning yourself with that person. So, For example, uh, if you want to be a social media guru or social media strategist, whatever term you want to use, uh, you would, you know, look for positions within your zip code or within your city 
uh, where you can work either part-time or full-time for a social media company so that you can really see how the bigger businesses do it. You know, everything I know, I would probably say, I'd probably say 90% of, of what I know is based on experience. Really busting my fundament, working with crazy bosses or agencies that have since gone under and learning from their mistakes. Uh, you know, working for agencies as a freelancer, working with agencies as a copywriter and an editor a web designer and everything else, just working with so many different businesses and so many different capacities and seeing the mistakes they learn. So I know, you know, look, don't put your foot there. There's a snake. Uh, so I, I know the mistakes that the majority of them make and um, the new small, younger business owners or entrepreneurs are making a lot of rookie mistakes that they really shouldn't be making because quite honestly, the books are out there. The videos are out there, yeah. but I can't make you read them. I can't make you watch these videos and have a hunger to learn. And that's really mm -hmm. key. I mean, I hate to keep harping on that, but you know, if, if you're a, a person in your, in your teens or twenties and you want to start a business, whatever it is, there are books out there. God knows there's a million books out there by people who have been through the war and have made it through the other end. And they're, trying to tell you, here are the lessons that I've learned. Here's what I've been through. We've learned by my mistakes. Here's the book. How many of them will read it? You know, so, you know, when I decided I wanted to start a business and I worked with many, many entrepreneurs and I would see all the mistakes that they were making, I made a commitment to myself a long, a long, long time ago that I would read a book a week. In some cases, I read more than one book a week. It's not that hard as it sounds. They have books on CD. They have audio books. You can sit in a chair and listen to the book. Uh, you can listen while you're in traffic. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I just made a commitment that I would consume as much of this as humanly possible. And I finally reached a point now where I'm in my 50s where I can say, you know, I may not be a Buddha, uh, but there's very, very few times where people have questions that I don't know what the answer is or where to go for the answer. Um, so I really would encourage the younger entrepreneurs out there to read the classic books on marketing and advertising. Go watch documentaries about marketing if you want to build a business. Be informed. Read books on people who have started business empires, but look for specific nuts and bolts of how they did it. Um, you know, I'm a, I, I, I'm a big fan of that. <clears throat> so are, are there some uh, specific roadblocks and resources that, um, it's kind of a two-parter here, uh, sure. roadblocks that you would warn um, entrepreneurs to look out for and then resources that you would encourage them to keep their eyes out for? Yeah, there's a lot of roadblocks. There's a lot of obstacles in your path. Um, you know, Whoever you work with, well, I would say don't assume that you can do everything yourself because look, mm -hmm. unless you're Superman, you can't do everything yourself. And even Superman couldn't do it all himself. So, you know, ask for help where you need help in your areas that you're just not getting results. How do you know if your marketing plan is working? How do you know if your website has the right SEO? Well, your phone should be ringing. And that's the truth. That's the bottom line. Is your phone ringing every half hour or so? Are you getting five to 10 emails from people who want to work with you every day? If not, then your marketing approach is just not there. It's weak and dying on the vine. Uh, so you need to be self-aware and identify what you want and be willing to organize a marketing plan and take action. And that's the biggest obstacle is just thinking, I'm just going to do things that aren't connected to a larger plan. Uh, it sounds silly. I mean, I never get in the car without knowing where and where I'm going. Uh, if I go to the grocery store and I don't have a list, I'm just going to wander around aimlessly. Uh, if I talk to uh, someone on a podcast, if I don't have an outline or I don't have some direction, I'm going to ramble. Uh, so you have to have direction. You have to have guidance. You have to have help. Um, so I, I, I really see that as a roadblock. 
know what you want to do before you start doing it. Know the potentials, know the obstacles, read books on business and entrepreneurship. And don't think you're done reading them until you feel like you can answer every question that you might have and take notes, you know, keep a journal or do inner dialoguing. You know, if that isn't working, get a coach, get a mentor. They do exist. They're out there. You know, uh, you know, and, and there's even TV shows that you can watch to get help on this stuff. You know, I don't really care for the U S version of shark tank uh, because I think they tend to make it look magical where the people step out and have an idea and then they get bids on the idea. That's not what is really happening. You know, uh, they have consultations that aren't on the TV program where they vet things and most of the deals fall through. Um, but you know, there are great shows on Amazon prime and on Netflix. There's documentaries about business owners and entrepreneurs. You've got Bloomberg, you've got Cheddar and other channels on TV. A lot of really good free resources. Um, YouTube has, you know, Stanford and Harvard and Princeton and Duke and all these great Ivy League institutions with some great business documentaries and programs that you can go to to learn. And I encourage anybody with business questions to get in touch with me. I'm always happy to answer one or two questions. Uh, Obviously, I can't answer a million questions and talk for hours with people. But if it's a short question, I'll get back to them. Yeah. <clears throat> so as far as um, your, your belief system and your, your value system, how do you incorporate that into your business? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if your viewers can see what's behind me or over my head or if I'm just on audio or not. But uh, – I've been pretty much a Buddhist for uh, a while now. Uh, you know, growing up around military bases and military people and everything, I would uh, party a lot when I was in my teens. I imagine most young guys and, and young ladies have done the same thing too. But Buddhism has always helped me with a lot of mental discipline. And that's always been one of the, the takeaways from being around some uh, military families is the, you know, military uh, approach to self-discipline and just getting things done. Uh, so eth as far as ethics, I'm just a really big proponent in doing things I believe in. You know, how do you know if the client is a right fit for you? Uh, are they doing work I believe in? Are they fired up? about getting results and moving forward with their business? Do they have enough skin in the game? Do they care about future generations? And I think most people just seem to coast. You know, they do what's comfortable. And they don't really think about doing things that are not comfortable, getting out of that, that comfort zone um, and really put, you know, putting your nose to the grindstone, so to speak. I don't think most people really are, are, are able to break free from that mindset until they have some kind of trauma or, you know, some kind of emergency or something. You know, it's like I saw the TV show Preppers. I think it's called Doomsday Preppers. Uh, and at the beginning of the show where they talk about why I am a prepper. And so one guy was saying, you know, hey, hey I had a great job and 2008 came around and the, the, the company was just dumping hundreds of employees left and right that mm -hmm. woke him up to the fact that the job doesn't own you jack. You know, whatever your uh, uh, beliefs are with the military, uh, you know, you don't want to be 100% beholden uh, to the government. Uh, you know, if there's a natural disaster, uh, you want to be self-reliant. You don't want to be in a position where you're sitting there waiting for weeks or months for help. You know, uh, so I'm just a really big proponent of taking the initiative. So ethically, uh, don't work with people who aren't committed. I don't believe in doing anything that runs me the wrong way that's going to harm others. Uh, that I, I feel is immoral. And that kind of shapes who I work with and what types of projects I'm going to work on, but also how I conduct myself. You know, I don't believe in doing something that's going to disrespect my family or disrespect my wife or disrespect me, and the legacy I'm trying to leave. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, better than anyone else. 
but uh, I try to hold myself to certain standards. Yeah, and uh, something I would I would add to that is <clears throat> sort of what what kind of comes out of it is we need to have those boundaries you know, around right you know, where where our you know our position is and you know where the things that we're willing to do and not willing to do and make sure that those boundaries absolutely are firm very firm yeah absolutely yeah one of my favorite quotes by the late great Malcolm X was you know if if we don't stand for something we may fall for anything. And, um, right. you know, whether you, whether you like him or don't like him, whether you agree with where he stood, he was a person who's always evolving and growing as an individual. Um, and, you know, he, he was very correct. You know, if we, so there, if we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, and that's exactly it. If we don't stand for something, we're very, we're very likely to fall for anything. So is there something uh, earlier in your life that you wish you had done that you did not do that you kind of look back at now? Oh, sure. I mean, there's a million things. I mean, I wish that I had, you know, stopped going out to uh, so many nightclubs and parties when I was younger and I'd really gotten more serious uh, at a younger age. But, you know, like they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. Really, I don't believe right. in in sitting Shiva and just sitting and, oh man, I feel so bad because I've made these decisions in the past. All you can right. do is learn, learn from them. Mm -hmm. You should feel bad if you don't learn from the mistakes. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I sure. I, you know, I wish I had invested uh, more money when I was younger. I wish I had done some things differently, but I'm also grateful that I wasn't more of a hellraiser. Uh, than I was, <laughs> which you would never know it to meet me because I think I'm a very, very low-key person. But I get animated about things I'm passionate about. But uh, sure, I mean, I wish I had invested more when I was younger. I wish I would spent more, even more time uh, reading and interning and, and working even more jobs than I did. You know, I always had, I was always someone who had at least two jobs, like at all times, ever since I can remember, you know, no matter how, how young I was, as far back as I can remember, I've always had at least two jobs at the same time because it wasn't so much about the money as it was always being hungry to learn more. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to understand something. So I would go and try to find a way I could do it or work with someone who was doing it or close to that, that hunger for knowledge. Um, so sure, yeah. I mean, I wish I'd invested more when I was younger. Um, I wish that I, had, you know, partied a little bit less. But it is what it is. Yeah. You know, glad I got it out of my system. I'm not still doing it. That's true. That's I guess the important, most important caveat is that you know it's it is back in the past and not not in the present. Yeah, I think it's kind of sad to be in your in your 40s or 50s and you're still throwing people out of windows or getting thrown out of windows and partying every single night. You're not, you're not leaving a real legacy uh, to your family if we talk about legacies. Certainly, if you are leaving a legacy, it's not a very positive one. Mm -hmm. So, what what type of hurdles did you did you face when you were starting up your business? A million. Uh, a million. Uh, I've had three businesses. Uh, the first business I started was a mediation nonprofit organization that I started with my lovely, uh, wonderful wife. Uh, that was a nonprofit organization. I really had very limited knowledge of how to structure a nonprofit. I had worked for nonprofits, I worked in marketing for nonprofits, but I had never tried to run a nonprofit and handle the marketing at the same time. Two very different things. So um, I ran into a lot of obstacles with that because the majority of people don't really know what mediation is. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's not as popular in the United States as it is in, in other countries. Um, in different states, uh, have more mediation than other states and other cities even have mediation programs that other cities don't have. And most people aren't uh, aware of mediation. So I encountered a lot of obstacles trying to start that. Um, all the, the, the drama of the work itself aside, uh, 
just there's a lot of difficulty trying to work with local court systems to generate the caseload to get the referrals coming in. There were overloads. Um, there were courts that were just booked to the gills with domestic issues and, and, court, and, and court cases. They were just more than they could handle. And they would tell you that, but you couldn't get them to refer out to you unless you were known specifically to the right clerks or the right judges who would refer the cases out. So unless you were in the know uh, or well networked, you wouldn't get the referrals. So those were some of the obstacles that I didn't anticipate. And after a couple of years, uh, it was just time to take it behind the shed and just put it out of its misery. And I remember my wife just saying to me, she's like, this is not fun. You know, the people you're talking to people with severe problems, the child custody disputes, going through divorce, declaring bankruptcy, there's all kinds of horrible, horrible problems uh, that you're trying to work with them through. And yeah, mediation is a lot more affordable than going to court. But also in a lot of cases, people just want to fight and go to court. They're addicted to that drama. And they would rather pay more money and go to court than try to peacefully resolve it in mediation. Uh, and finally, she just said to me one day, this is really depressing. I don't want you to bring this home. You're not making any, any money. Pick something that you really enjoy doing that you can manage yourself. If I can get involved, I can get involved when I want to. Like you don't need me to, to do too much. So um, it was uh, shortly after that I started a web design business. And even though I love web design, I don't really, uh, you know, as I've done marketing more and more and more, I found that people will fixate on the tools. So if I have a company called Sudden Impact Web Design LLC, or just Sudden Impact Web Design, people will fixate on web design. And they'll come at me and say, well, how is this different from the do-it-yourself or programs or my son is good at Excel, maybe he can do it or whatever. And they're missing the forest for the trees. It's not about just the website. It's about all these other component parts of the puzzle that need to come and work through that as a marketing uh, plan. And you have social and SEO and content and the website itself are all columns or, or strategies to achieve that plan, just like what we were talking about earlier. And that has been a recurring obstacle toward working with people where they would rather try to do everything themselves or convince that, you know, anybody can do this. So I really don't need the help. And they're fixating on the tool and not the solution. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, so that was a, 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 that's a recurring uh, theme that I see with a lot of people. Uh, and then shortly after that, just very recently, I started a division of that to work solely with lawyers and law firms because of my experience as a mediator. Uh, I feel like I know the type of work that lawyers and small law firms do, the tools that they need, the help that they need, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the challenges they face. So I started the division of work specifically with lawyers. And I've also begun co coaching and consulting with startup founders and small business owners and entrepreneurs on the side, uh, which honestly I never thought I would do. Um, and I was a volunteer certified business mentor for SCORE a division of the Small Business Administration for uh -huh. about five, somewhere between five and seven years, I was a, a certified business mentor for them. And I literally talked to hundreds of business owners, every type that you can imagine. Uh, people who owned their own marketing agencies and had, you know, a million dollar contracts on the line. Uh, people who owned private colleges to people who were electricians and accountants and, you know, home, uh, you know, handymen, uh, salon owners, you name it. And I would talk to them. And after about five to seven years, I got very disillusioned with it and just said, they're not listening to me. I'm telling them what they should do. I'm telling them what tools they should use. And you can tell by the tone of their voice or after you talk to them two or three times, they're not doing it. So I just said, you know what? From now on, I'm, I'm not going to do this for free anymore because it took me a lifetime to get to what I know and it's not being valued. They're not acting on it. 
So from now on, I have to charge or they just won't take what I see seriously. They won't value the outcome. And I'd say 50% of the people that I've been coaching, they still won't do. You can tell them what to do. You can tell them how to do it. But they still won't take the initiative because I haven't really delved enough into that pain of how bad does this really hurt? How much is really on the line? And, and if we can get more into that, then they're willing to do uh, what it takes to get it done, to reverse their fortune, so to speak. So it's a long answer to a short question. Yeah, yeah I think that, that that really does apply to to so many different businesses, you know, as we're interacting with, you know, the prospective clients, you know, with our prospect that, you know, we, we do have to dig into that pain and you know, just uncover it and expose it and, and get it out of the open. Because if, if you're not able to do that, then there, there really is no forward momentum. And, yeah. You, know, you yeah. have, you have to put it in real terms to where, you know, then you can address, you know, how long have you been dealing with this? You know, how, how much does this cost you? You know, expose those things. And then in turn, you know, what would you be able to be willing to do in order to resolve this? And then right. make yeah, a I, positive move. I agree a hundred percent. And I think uh, for me, you know, as I'm more of a, a business coach and mentor, uh, you know, as much as I don't like to do it, I really have learned that I have to spend more time discussing the pain principles or pain points uh, and what, what's, you know, how bad does it really hurt? I have to go over that with people more bef than the solution. We have to spend like 70% of our time going over these things before I can get them across the street and take action. Uh, just recently, I talked to a nonprofit owner um, who was saying, you know, I want to grow my nonprofit organization. We're getting more and more donors. We're making more and more money. Uh, our, our website just isn't delivering anything. Uh, we're losing people, you know, on a daily basis. People just aren't connecting. And she just, you know, well, here's a solution. It's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. Are you willing to invest a couple thousand dollars so that you can make much more over the prolonged period of time? Even within a year, you're probably going to double or triple, you know, the, the volume of people because you're going to be online. You're going to start bringing in so many people through Google search. Um, she just, you know, hey, I'm going to keep trying to do things myself. Thank you for the information. So the message that made to me was you really didn't spend enough time going over the pain points with it. Um, and, and, you know, and I don't enjoy doing it, but that's, that's really the gist of it. I'm just going to switch glasses for a minute. Oh, sure. So I can see the screen. Okay. So Can I you guess still so, hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, kind of as we're winding up our, our time here, uh, I have a final question for you, and it's sort of a trivia type, type question, if you will. Sure. Uh, tell me some. Tell me something about you that most of the people uh, in your circle don't know. Um. Well, I, my wife and I love uh, taking domestic house rabbits and training them. They actually make really, really great pets. I love animals. I always have. I love nature. Um, so we started, we started doing that like almost 20 years ago, just taking, you know, rabbits at shelters and just training them, use a litter box, stay away from furniture, and they make great little pets. Um, another thing about me, I'm very, very proud of, um, is I actually me mediated a uh, case that was scheduled to appear in Judge Judy. Um, and I remember how I was so surprised. Um, after it was over with, they showed me this letter that they had that, you know, had the Judge Judy TV program logo on it. And they were scheduled to get on a plane and go and appear on that show. And I told them, I said, you guys have no idea what a great deal you were able to work out with me. Because if you think Judge Judy is going to negotiate with you and, let you talk and vent, you know, <laughs> you know, you got another thing coming. Um, so, but I'm really, really proud of that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it was probably two things about me that a lot of people don't know. Well, so David, uh, 
you know, obviously people are going to need to, to be able to reach out to you. So what are some good contact uh, means for them to, to reach you? Sure. Um, I have a Google voice number uh, that I give out to everybody, but it's a Google voice number people. So if you call it, don't think I'm going to pick up. Uh, you would leave a message. I get that message as an email and then I'll, you know, see what the message is. Um, but you can call me 424-DAVID-01. That's 424-DAVID-01. You can call that and leave a message. If it's spam, you know, please don't waste your time. Um, my business is online. Sudden Impact Web Design is on the internet at siwd.co. And uh, my business working with attorneys and lawyers and smaller practice law firms is de facto digital.co. Okay. So you heard it here, folks. Go reach out to David and you know, take advantage of his expertise, uh, his, his qualifications here, and to be able to uh, put your business in a better position, you know, get, get uh, that exposure that you need, and you know, stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the biggest thing there is you know, we, we have t- uh, tips and tricks that we can use, and, and David's got them. So you know, instead of you trying to do it, you know, let him do it. You're going to save a lot of money. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate, I agree. Appreciate you coming on, on the program. And like I tell all of my guests, uh, I look forward to seeing you around the bend, my friend. All right. Thank you, sir. Keep in touch. Thank you. you've been listening to legacy cast thank you for joining us today and be sure to come back next time as we speak with more top influencers industry experts and business owners from around the world